Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, today I'm going to be covering over the steps to produce mealworm frass, uh, mealworms, beetles, and pupas. It's about a seven stage system that I have come up with uh, to produce this valuable agricultural mineral. And we'll be covering uh, the first few steps uh, to get you to that. Uh, the first stage is preparing the bins, getting them uh, full of wheat germ, or I'm sorry, wheat bran. And in some areas, depending where you are, some wheat bran you purchase from feedstock supply stores will need to be sifted, uh, separated the wheat germ and the wheat bran flakes. Uh, this is to help us gather the mealworm frass uh, because the wheat germ does sift through uh, 30 mesh screens. And that's what we're going to be using to get the frass out. So we need to get rid of the germ before we utilize the substrate. Uh, this is just for wheat bran in general. There are other substrates you can use, but wheat bran is by far one of the cheapest feeds, high protein content that is available pretty much everywhere that you can go and start your mealworms with today. This is a 28 quart bin. You can get them at Walmart for about $6 each. Uh, they're usually there. Sometimes you have to order them online. Uh, we've been generating our own bins. You can get it too to sift frass quickly. Uh, this has a 30 mesh screen built into it that the worms live on top of. And it saves us quite a bit of labor when it comes to the sifting process. But I'll show you the low tech method now. Uh, this is the process we use to get started. This video will be covering the whole process from eggs to beetles to eggs again. What you see now, these are eggs and hatched larvae, very, very beginning stages of development. If you do not have your own worms, you can go purchase them at the pet store or from kofrass.com. We ship everywhere. Uh, you can start your own colony, but you're going to be getting at the adolescent stage, which we'll be covering later in this video. Right now, this is the egg stage, and we'll be covering how to care for the eggs. The egg stage is the easiest part of taking care of the beetle. Once the eggs have laid, you just place them into the bin you see here and they set in the shelves usually two to three, almost four weeks before you really have to do much of anything. Uh, they don't produce much frass. They sit there, they hatch and they grow and you just have to make sure they have enough moisture, a carrot or a potato. Uh, they don't require much moisture at the stage. And so not much feeding is needed during the first three to four weeks. You will see movement increase and that's when they turn into the adolescent stage. So as they grow up you will see more molt start to develop on the surface. Uh, you'll see a few photos here of what you might be looking at for when it's time to start sifting for frass. Uh, once that molt develops that's when you know that the life stages are changing and they are growing and they're going to start producing a lot of frass. So to first gather the frass you must grab the bin that we're going to do and set it down and I put a 27 gallon tote next to it and I grab a 30 mesh sieve and I tilt the bin to the front and then I begin processing the substrates. Uh, I do it a little bit at a time and then I take it, sieve it over the, sieve it over the 27 gallon, put it into a secondary holding unit and I continue until there's nothing left in the first bin. And once that done is done, I pour that back into the original bin. And then I weigh the frass and I continue on to the next. But before moving on, if we need to add more substrate, because the mealworms had eaten it all, uh, we can add some more at this moment. This is a good time to do it. And then also make sure uh, if they did deplete the carrots or potatoes or whatever you're using to give them moisture, make sure that is also replenished. Now once the adolescent mealworms have aged to a point, they will start pupating. This requires an additional step beyond just collecting frass. We will have to grab the pupa sifting tray. Now this is a specialty item created by Space Coast Mealworms. You can buy that on their website, or you can make your own, or just be creative and, and figure out a different method. But for now, this is what I use, and this is what works. So, you sift the frass out first. That step remains the same. But then, 
you put the pupa sifter tray in the secondary bin and you dump what you had just sifted over the 27 gallon tote into the secondary bin that has the pupa sifter tray in there. And from there you shake it and shake it. Uh, sometimes I've noticed with these bins that you may have issues with the worms going through the slots. So you may have to pull out a tweezers, long tweezers. I recommend getting these types and individually pulling out the worms. There are some tips and tricks. If you use the sifter tray, pupa sifter tray, the worms will actually get caught inside there. So you can just keep dumping the tray back and forth until all the worms are gone and then you can only you only need to do a few worms at a time and then you'll be able to collect it and then you place that pupas you've just collected into a hatchery bin they must be separated from the worms and they must be because once they hatch you'll have an issue with tons of beetles crawling around in the worm bins and it's just not good to have that happening so we mitigate that by collecting pupas and putting them in a hatchery. And then from that hatchery leads to eventual beetles being born, which we will show and how to create the substrate for the beetles. So now that our pupas have sat and hatched a while, we have to collect them. We have to get them out. I use a cardboard uh, egg carton usually to help them sit above the food line. I put the food underneath that and they all gather underneath there and conglomerate so I can easily take this and get the beetles onto a, a mesh screen. Mesh screen's good because they like to crawl on there and they get stuck to it. So I keep doing this. I keep getting the dead food, stuff that's molding out. I clean the bin up and I gather the pupas. The reason we need to take care of the hatched beetles is because they will eat the pupas when moisture content runs out. So that's why it's important to have that food in there because I'll distract them from cannibalizing the pupas so you have a high hatchery, hatched ratio and you're not losing any bugs. So after I finished collecting all the easy bugs, I put them into another container and I put them aside. Uh, it would work best if you have two of these sieves working in tandem because then you can pour them back and forth and do this quicker. Uh, the next step you'll see. So now I've poured the pupas onto the cleared out sieve. And now I use the screen to capture the beetles. The beetles like to cling on. And then I pour that mass into the hatchery. And I rinse and repeat until eventually there's not many beetles left. And then I take the tweezers and I pull out the remaining stragglers as many as I can. And then from there I take the beetles that have hatched and I place them into a pre-existing or if I have full beetle colonies, I start a new one. If this is the first time, first round where you have pupas hatching, you will need to start a new beetle bin. Video. So, all right, this was the old uh, breeder bin. This is what has eggs in it. Let's make this clear again, okay? I'm making this clear so there's no confusion. This is the breeder bin. You see it has number 32 on it. So this bin is going to be changed over. This bin is going to be a new bin. So this is going to be a brand new bin. So this is going to be number 42. This is my 42, 42nd bin. So I'm going to have 40, 42 on here. And then this is going to be the new breeder bin. So this is going to turn into 32. And I'm just going to take the sticker off of this. I'm going to put it onto here. This will be 32 now. And this is going to be 41. And then I'm going to put this bin to the side when I'm done. And I'll be going on. And I got another breeder bin I have to take care of. And that's the system. So, and when you're, when you're sifting out these beetles from the eggs, you take it like this, grab it, and you just shake it like this into here until you get all of 
all the bran gets out, and I put it onto a, a, a mesh like this. And while you're sifting these beetles into here, you're watching to make sure that there's nothing going on here. There's no other pests. There's no other bugs inside here. And when you do see other bugs, take them, you kill them right away. There's only room for one type of bug in this bin. And there's bigger colanders. Like I just do this because, you know, this is the slow method I've been using. I haven't upgraded yet to bigger things. And I will be soon. I just haven't. I just want to show people what to do. That's all. And then they can come up with ideas on how to make it better. So right now this works for me. I'm generating about 13 to 14 pounds every three days of frass. And that's what I'm after. I'm after the fertilizer. So see, I put them in here. And I'm going to let them crawl around here. They grab onto the screen. And then I slowly sort them out into here. And then I weigh them. And then I weigh them out. And I usually want at least four to six ounces of beetles per breeder bin. That's what I've been going for lately. And then I harvest that every three to four weeks. So that's the, that's how you do it. So this is a little trick I use to make this process quicker. I use two of the 30 mesh sieves to pass back and forth the beetles. And they like to stick onto the mesh the really alive ones so it always guarantees that the ones i'm picking out are alive because my goal here is to separate the dead from the alive because the dead beetles really smell and they generate a foul odor and if you have 10 beetle breeder bins with 10 dozen dead beetles per bin it gets really stinky so you need to make sure to take care of this and also that dead beetles are really good as a soil amendment to use in whatever you may dream of. So this is the process and this makes it easier. So I have gathered most of the beetles that are alive. I poke through them with the tweezers and get every little last bug I can. You don't have to do this. This is just something I do because I wanna maximize my outputs. So this is why I do this. And then once that's done, you take the dead beetles and you pour them into a bag. I save them. You don't have to. And then I prepare the next bedding. You have to smush it down, make it a little bit hard packed, just so they can traverse the grounds easier. And then I take the newly formed bedding and I rebuild the colony. And then I pour the newly sifted beetles onto the brand new breeding grounds for our bugs to produce eggs and lay eggs and once again in three to four weeks you will be doing this once again. Then we go to the eggs here we can see they're alive they're moving and we put potatoes on them and put them right back on the shelves and you're ready to begin that's once again stage one and it starts all over again. So that concludes our presentation on the Molito tenebrio, the mealworm. We have talked about the life events, the eggs hatching, hatch larvae, adolescence, adult worms, the pupa, pupa hatchery transfer, beetles laying eggs, and sifting the beetles and substrates and back to one again. And this is all brought to you by K Organics and as well Bob Biomass. We're getting together to create super beneficial regenerative minerals and there is a handout to this presentation i will make it available to those who ask for it if you would like it let me know and you can also visit our website i have a form a shop our form is full of all kinds of interesting research that we do about frass and and biochar and combining microbes and all the things care organics is uh up to and everything we're doing also you can Start your own mealworm shop because I do sell mealworms. I have a shop. You can just place an order anytime you want. And I just want to say uh, thanks to everyone for watching. And you can reach me at kofrass at gmail.com or go to my uh, webpage at kofrass.com and you can talk to me live there anytime you want. And uh, thank you so much. And I'll say a special thanks to Bob Kaler for making this all a possibility. Hope you 
I'll take care. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.